Well, all right. Thank you for staying with us and welcome back to this Mashuja Day special coverage where we've been following up on the events leading to tomorrow's feat, which is the 58th Mother Rocket Day celebrations. Of course, as I'd mentioned earlier on when we began with this broadcast, the studio with me today is uh, William Kabogo, Honorable William Kabogo, the former Kiambu governor, as well as the party leader of Tujibebe Wakenya Party, as well as Professor Peter Kogwanja, who's a political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this evening. And maybe if I could just begin with you, Prof, we have the Mashuja Day celebrations happening tomorrow. And if you look at the country, as from the time these national celebrations were devolved to other places, Kisumu is far not probably one of the biggest ones. And we saw the present welcomed with so much love and joy. Judging from the absence of the head of state in matters pertaining to politics and basically him going sort of underwater, how excited are the people of Kirinyagat in general, the people of the mountain with tomorrow? Uh, well, the people of Kirinyaga must be excited because this, mu this must be the first national event to take place in that county. So naturally they'll be excited. Uh, the people of Mount Kenya generally will also be very excited about it. Uh, but it is important to recognize this innovation that uh, devolving these celebrations is part and parcel of nation building. Remember, this is what the heroes of this nation fought for, a united, uh, prosperous republic. That's what they wanted, uh, to replace colonialism. That it is happening in Kirinyaga, the heartland of Mau Mau, the heartland of the struggle for independence together with other parts of Mount Kenya region, I think that's a recognition in itself of the region as one of the founding regions of the nation, uh, the post-colonial uh, nation. Uh, I would urge uh, that um, as we move forward, we emulate this example and uh, possibly devolve other aspects. Uh, if you go to South Africa, for example, they have devolved even the government institutions. Uh, the, co the parliament is in Cape Town, uh, uh, judiciary is in Brofontein, which is the, the Cape, and, when, and the seat of government is in Pretoria. And the same has gone for other ministries, depending on where they need to be. Uh, meaning, every part of the country has something to hold it to say, this is a part of government we have. So th maybe that this, is, this should be the second stage of this dis devolu uh, devolution not only of ceremonies yeah. and, uh, you know, uh, celebrations, but also of institutions. Okay. And that will also mean devolution of uh, employment, opportunities, and, and so on. All right. Well, Honorable Kabogo, of course, we expect politics to also take center stage at tomorrow's function. And yesterday, one of my colleagues, Ayub, sat down with uh, Kirinyaga County Governor, and that is Anwai Guru, and she said, moving forward, they expect the president to sort of provide direction so that they can start moving as a mountain. But there's also an interesting statement she made. She said that in terms of endorsing somebody for the presidential seat next year, she doesn't expect the president to do it directly. So I'm trying to understand, if you look at countries like the United States, mm -hmm. the outgoing president has always done it publicly and endorsed somebody. So what are we looking at in terms of this? Well, I'm not sure, surely, how the president uh, intends to uh, pass the baton, if yeah. so, uh, if you want to say it that way. But uh, this is a tricky time in Kenyan politics. Yeah. Because you see a lot of politics is happening in the mountain. You will not finish three days without having to see William Ruto, uh, the deputy president, in Mount Kenya. You now know that uh, Raila Odinga is in Mount Kenya as we speak. And it will continue to happen until the end of elections. Why? It is because people assume there will not be a Kikuyu or Mount Kenya candidate. And I don't know where that notion comes from because some of us are there and we may, we may want to buy. Again, uh, it is tricky for projects, and I call it projects because you remember Uhuru Kenyatta was Project yeah. um, 202. Um, if the president, for instance, decides, uh, I want to say it is Kabogo, he may put me in a lot of trouble because I will look like a project. So, yeah. so as one Anway Guru says, I didn't hear her, but if she said that he may not be able to do so directly, um, I would believe that he would not want to do that because he knows the effects. He has been a project himself. 
But uh, having said that, uh, coming back to the question you asked, uh, Prof, uh, it is true, it is good to devolve these functions in terms of celebrations. But what is it we are celebrating? 58 years after independence, what is happening in the country? I would imagine if our forefathers would wake up today, would be very upset with us because of the state of the economy, because of the state of the pockets of Kenyans, the extent of poverty, the extent of unemployment, yes. the extent of crime, the extent of corruption that is costing us, almost grinding the country into a halt. And, and um, it is sad that, uh, you know, 58 years later, we still are probably as poor as we were in terms of percentage on the general public yeah. uh, as we were during the Muzungu time. So it means we haven't really moved in terms of the development of the Kenyan person. Okay. And, and that is truly worrying. Okay. And this is something that we must start worrying about okay. and, and call it as it is. Uh, we continue uh, burying our heads in sand we will never get to know what hit us. Okay. Well, so as a country, yes. these are things we must discuss. All right. It's now the period of elections. Uh, if you look at the entire breed that is coming through to be elected to go to office as the next regime or as the next admin administration, you will find the same people okay. who were there 20 years ago. Okay in ministerial positions, up to vice president, up to deputy president, up to prime minister, the same people. For the last 20 years, and we have not made that move of making the Kenyan man a richer man, of okay. making Kenya a middle-class economy. Well, Prof, let me just bring you into... So my question is, yes. how do you have the same monkeys in the same forest? Yeah and expect different, different results. results. All right. Something Prof. needs to be done in that mix <laughs> so that we can cut the tape and say this is a shorter route okay. to get to Kenya, a middle class, to get Kenya into a middle, middle class, class economy. Prof, just to uh, give you a chance to actually respond to what Honorable Kaboga has said is that, yes, we of course know that the Jubilee government, just like any other government, has its shortcomings and also its wins. Moving into tomorrow's celebrations, can we really say there's nothing to celebrate out of this government? Well, I didn't say there's True. nothing. Sure I didn't say that. Sure. Honorable there are a couple say. of things. Couple of things. But right. at the end of the day, yes. it is a Kenyan person. How developed is that person? All right. And that's my question. Just to give you a chance to respond to that, Prof. Mm. Well, I, I'm not necessarily responding. Basically, yeah. <clears throat> answering to, to the question, have we made any significant gains in terms of uh, our, the aspirations of our founding fathers uh, in the last 58 or so years. Um, obviously, uh, if you don't have to recognize in the game, at least you can take your task freely. Colonialism did not allow us to take task. <laughs> <laughs> Just freely. You can walk yeah. into a pub and have your task. Yes. I guess what Mwishimu uh, Akabogo would be uh, uh, we'll have problems with whether you can afford it. True. Uh, that, would, that, that would have been the uh, next question. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what that I was going to ask. That's yeah. what you'd be bothered with. Um, I think 58 years on, we have an opportunity to do a clear op uh, evaluation of the models of economic uh, development that, that have been adopted and whether these models have... Uh, benefited the yeah. ordinary people. If you look at the model of Jomo Kenyatta, he singled out three enemies of the people at yes. that time, which is ignorance, poverty, and disease. And therefore, all the developments basically rallied around those three. Education, uh, to add ignorance, the health services, and water, and all this to add uh, you know, disease and the, the, the war on poverty in terms of economic management. That's how he, he dealt, he simplified it. F Moi was all over in terms of what he was doing, all over. But for him, political stability was important. Yeah. And uh, anything, anything did not matter. What mattered most is, uh, economic, is uh, political stability. That's why he was saying 
Siasa mbaya, maisha mbaya. That's, that's how he reduced it. Okay. Come to Kibaki. Kibaki uh, basically took economy, but also took a good chance, chunk of what uh, Kenyatta the first had done, which is basically poverty uh, uh, elimination. And what Mwishimu Kabogo is talking about is that there was deliberate effort yeah. to in, engage with the small man so that they become part of the economy. And what happens is that uh, the moment you, 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 you pay teachers, for example, in Kiambu, all of a sudden the teachers are paid, you see economy booming. People right. eating chicken, people going to the market to buy, and the economy booms okay. when everybody has money. Yeah, yeah. Now, Uhuru's model um, has been that of basically uh, raising what we call the towering heights of the economy. Uh, highways, uh, infrastructure, uh, and so on. Yeah. Not to say that he has ignored medicine and, and I mean, uh, hospitals okay. and so on, right. but obviously uh, there is need to address the kind of economy we are having, which is driven by IT. And IT does not put money in, in, a, in a coffee farmer's pocket okay. uh, and so on. Right. So again, uh, in, uh, as we celebrate Man uh, Masuja Day, we, we must ask what model suits a country like Kenya so that we balance between the imperatives of development okay. and the imperatives of poverty alleviation, where, which means enabling people to have cash All right. and to do the purchase. All right, you gentlemen, know, well, you know, you know, you know uh, just uh, pro an important just, just allow me to take a short, quick break, then okay. we'll get back with this conversation. I'll give you the opportunity to pick it up on that as we continue. Of course, after the break, we talk about politics, which basically is the defining factor in what the gentlemen are talking about. And also, I'll wrap in another guest that will be joining us virtually that is Honorable Maoka Maori, the Member of Parliament for Igembe North, just to tell us more about what the visit of Rilo Dinga has been in that particular region, even as we expect to have the celebrations tomorrow. So let's just take that short break. I'll be back in a short while.